We're going to dive right into it. I'm not going to spend too much time on the pre-roll other than go check out my Winter Ball vlogs. Episode 8 will be airing tonight, so I'm going to try to publish this podcast today, and then the episode 8 of the Winter Ball vlog will air tonight. Be sure to check that out. Um, And I also have screen records of all my outings. I've been getting a lot of questions regarding my outings and how things have been going and so on and so forth. You can go watch those on YouTube. And while you're at it on my YouTube, subscribe. Thank you. All right, so I wanted to do this episode. It won't take long. This was something that got brought to my attention. Uh, Not brought to my attention. I don't know what I'm really trying to say there, but kind of just became a reality uh, the other day, my last outing. And I think it's the the coolest part of like what I'm doing with my podcast or or brand or, or whatever is like I'm still going through experience in the game of baseball. Right. Like I'm still having experience that uh, that I'm going through that is sometimes new experience. You know, sometimes it's it's the same thing over and over again. I just haven't really learned from it or it's the same thing that I've learned from. But I just I don't put into action to counter it or correct the 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 problem. So the the one thing in particular that I really wanted to dive into on this episode was essentially the notion of one pitch at a time, right? I'm a pitcher, so I use the analogy of a pitcher, one pitch at a time. I guess it's the same thing for a hitter, right? It's one pitch at a time. Um, There was a video, I think it was in 2010 or 2011, it came out on YouTube and it was like all the hype because I remember all, all the guys... Um, all the, all the, all my buddies like talking about it, that they would watch it and get hyped up. And it was a TCU like baseball. I don't know if it was, it wasn't really a hype video. It was kind of just like a TCU baseball, uh, video that they probably played before games on the like jumbotron. And the one thing that like stuck out other than like the, you know, 5am workouts and the hashtag grind and all that stuff was the, the skipper made a made a comment about win this pitch and that's always stuck out to me right in in terms of like a mindset win this pitch because here's here's the thing as you guys know listening probably aspiring baseball players or um, fans of the game or whatever just have a good understanding of the game you know that there's a lot of things surrounding it right there's a lot of pressure there's a lot of internal external pressure there's a lot of potential politics involved. There's there's a lot that goes on in the game of baseball other than just like you throw the ball, you hit the ball. Uh, you know, obviously, like there's that, but there's a lot more that that goes on. And and we're human beings, so we are definitely like 100% flawed in the way that we think and the way that we have the, like kind of the inability to control our thought processes over and over again right? We have negative thoughts. Sometimes we have positive thoughts. Outcomes kind of provoke more positive thoughts. And then outcomes can also promote, you know, negative thoughts as well. But the other day, just to give you like the entire story of kind of what happened to me, and this has happened at multiple points in my career, and apparently I just haven't learned from it. But uh, what happened was, it was my last outing in the regular season, I hadn't given up a run. And I knew that, like, I don't really look at stats anymore for, as I play, like I used to be the biggest stat guy, but now I just don't even look at numbers. I kind of just, you know, whatever, but I knew that I didn't get, I hadn't given up a run. And obviously it would be like super cool to go all like a quote unquote season without giving up a run. Like that'd be dope. Um, During this time leading up to my last outing, actually like hours before the game of my last outing started, there was talk about me and the potential of signing a contract with a couple different teams. And there was just, you know, there was just talk. There was just kind of like that talk of like, oh, hey, we're interested, right? So as a human being, what happens? And, and me, I've talked about this multiple times on my show and on whatever platform that I can get my hands on is like I've, I'm known to do be a perfectionist and I'm I've publicly stated how that has been a great thing for me but has also been like a terrible thing throughout my career right so for some reason 
and again, this, this has happened before in my career at, at points where I have been a free agent and there has been talks about, you know, a team signing me. And for some reason I try to do more and I try to, uh, essentially like make the scenario, the scenario amplified in my head. Whereas everything leading up to that point has been good, right? Like ideally nothing would change from the physical and mental side, right? I would just be like, oh, cool. Like, you know, teams are interested. I haven't given up a run. Like whatever it is, I know a lot of people struggle with this, but whatever it is, you know, nothing should change because I'm just content with the way that things are going. But for me, the mistake that I made this, this last outing was I had this thought of, man, this is all going according to plan. Like all my hard work's paying off. Now I need to do more, right? Like now I need to like turn it up a notch for some reason. And this is a mental thought, right? It's not necessarily a physical thing because physically things had been turned up, right? <clears throat> so I get kind of this, this idea in my head about trying to control more than you can control. And I know I've talked about this in the past in regards to just controlling the controllables and, and really coming to like a super simplistic mindset, which again, I'm going through these experiences all the time, which is the beautiful thing about the game, right? But for me, it's one thing to like say it and go, yeah, I've learned from it. And it's a totally other thing to put into action. Like, what does it look like to stay the same and stay even keel? Like, what does that physically and mentally look like? So anyways, to, to recap the story, and then uh, we'll talk, I guess, more about some of the thoughts that I had in regards to this topic. Um, the story goes, I go in my last outing, and I have this, again, I had this idea in the back of my head, not even the back of my head, like the front of my mind about do more, like don't screw this up. This is happening, right? Like all of these things that mentally were occurring, but then leading to physical like restriction. And I wasn't able to be free and be myself and, and do the things on the mound that I've been doing this entire season that has been working and, um, and I gave up a run, I gave up a home run actually first batter. <laughs> so I just, the whole outing wasn't good. I mean, I, I think I gave up another hit, you know, one run, one hit, no walks, no punchies, but it was just like a, the worst outing that I had here. And I look at it. I, I literally like <laughs> I remember walking off the mound and this was a couple of weeks ago. Now I just got to, to recording this episode. But I literally remember walking off the mound and being like, I got to talk about this. Like, I need to get this off my chest because hopefully there's someone out there that I can influence, inspire, or like reach with this. No, like, you're not alone, I guess. But I'm literally just going to talk and we're, I guess we're going to kind of just brainstorm some ideas of things that I've been thinking about in terms to counter this kind of notion, Right. Because we all play the game, I mean, not all of us, but like, I guess us at the professional level, we, we play in hopes, in dreams and aspirations of reaching the big leagues, right? That's kind of always the goal, the end goal. Um, and we know that in order to do that, we need to consistently be good, right? To be great is just to be consistently good. And that's hard, right? Like we, we all can go out there when we're feeling good and be like one, two, three, two punchies and a six, three. And we're all like, let's go, dude, this is me. But to do that day in and day out is hard, right? Because some days you don't feel good and then and, and some days, you know, whatever. But from the mental stand, from like the mental component, that's a whole nother freaking barrier to just like be even keel the whole time. And I was thinking about it in terms of how I approach this and, and how I'm going to learn from this and how I'm going to grow from this experience again, because like I said, I've gone through this, like literally the same thing, a couple different points in my career where there's been, I've been a free agent. There's been teams, you know, uh, interested in, in, in signing me. And then like that next outing, it kind of goes to crap. 
it doesn't really go to crap crap like I don't poop the pants but you know it doesn't go as good as I maybe would have liked or things had been going previously leading up to that outing and um, just kind of going off you know in my head and, and thinking about it was like what do I need to do this next time this rolls around and the first thing that pops into my mind dude like no joke is I can't care that much right it's so easy to say this and it's it's just another thing to do and I think I've even said this on a couple different podcasts with like guests and talking about the greats and how like they get to a certain point where they just don't care like you know what's the worst thing that could happen right and I think the reason why I kind of put even more internal pressure on myself that leads to bad performance during these moments and experiences in my career um, is, is just simply because I'm like so restricted due to the mindset of I have to be way better than I've been leading up to this if I want to accomplish my goal, right? Which is a terrible way of thinking it. If, if I like really look at it and I break this down simply, like that's a terrible way to approach what I'm trying to accomplish because restriction, right? Freedom. I know firsthand experience that I just do better when I'm loose and I'm free and I'm having fun. And now when this whole thing arises, this experience arises or arose, I guess, is that a word? In this case, um, I was, I automatically felt like that sense of restriction, right? And then all of a sudden the game became less joyful. It became a task that I needed to do. I needed to accomplish this task this task of having a really, really good outing to propel me into my goal of getting back in an MLB organization, right? And just that little thing there, obviously it's not like little, it's a huge goal, but just like that little piece that, that, that occurred drastically changed like the outcome of my outing. So I'm looking at it almost as this podcast, I hit record, I hit record on the video, and I'm literally just like venting out loud, and I'm just brainstorming out loud. So you guys are, are coming along for this ride, so I appreciate you listening. <laughs> but for me, like I said, man, like if I do have goals and dreams, aspirations of, of playing in the big leagues, which I, I, again, I'll say this till I'm blue in the face, like I believe that I can do that, believe that I can get hitters out. The one of the things that was said to me um, before that first outing was, you know, one of the associate, I think, like big league scouting directors or whatever, asked a question to the individual that turned me in from the scouting department. And the guy asked, like, can he get big league hitters out? And he was like, absolutely. And then he told me that. And then all of a sudden I get this thing in my head about, man, I need to like go prove that I can freaking do it. Like, you know, be better, be more, do more. Ah. And that's not me, right? Like that's not me. So again, just kind of spitballing here, brainstorming, um, kind of gonna, I know I've jumbled all through this podcast so far, um, but just to round it out that, that TCU video that I mentioned, like win this pitch, right? That's the approach that I'm best at. And I think I encourage you, whoever you are, if you're a pitcher, um, you know, fielder, hitter, whatever, like win this pitch. Think about it. Like there's so many different things that we have the ability to control, right? From the work ethic and the, and the, the smart work smarter, not harder type thing that I talk about reference a lot. There's so many things that we can control. And then again, there's so many things that, that are beyond our control, right? Umpires, freaking weather, like all of these other things like that we don't really have a grasp on. We don't really have a control. But when it really comes down to it, and this is performance-based, when it comes down to it, man, it's not about controlling, uh, okay, so like in the moment, right? So for me, on the bump, facing that leadoff guy that hits a homer off me, it's not about trying to strike out the side while OO to the first guy. 
right? Like I can have a game plan, but that mindset, I'm looking way too long term. Right? We always talk about like looking at the big picture and setting yourself up for success for the, from the big picture standpoint, which is great. But in the moment, win this pitch. Take one pitch at a time. And I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you guys, but I'm basically talking to me. If you can do everything in your power to control the controllables and put yourself in the best possible situation to win each and every pitch, right? From the training aspect, nutrition, sleep, like all of those things that we, we talk about from the just overall development optimization standpoint. And then when it really comes down to it, man, simplify every single thing that, that plays a part in performance and go, I'm going to win this pitch. What do I need to do to win this pitch? And then it just, all of a sudden I feel like it just becomes so simple and it's not complex because you're not up there thinking I need to strike out the side. I need to I'm going to face three guys, but I need to strike out five of them. Like That's kind of sometimes, honestly, the way that I think is I'm going into outing and I, I'll, be, I'll be like, all right, well, if I need to pitch in the big leagues, then I definitely need to freaking have an immaculate inning here or else I'll never get the chance, right? Like that's just me being a perfectionist. And I've accepted that and I've kind of over the years have learned how to deal with that, I, I guess. But um Honestly, I know this, this thing take, took 20 minutes to say, but for me, and hopefully I can encourage you guys with this simple, this simple kind of uh, cue, notion, thought, whatever, is like, win this pitch. Take everything else out and focus on the one pitch and the execution of that one pitch. Now, when that's done, turn the page, clean slate, back on the saddle, win this pitch. Right, just be. And there's two components, right? So you don't execute the pitch, or your hitter, you don't like you swing and miss, or whatever it is, like you fail. It's about how quickly can I then turn the page, get back on, get back into my comfort zone, happy place, whatever. Clear mind, clear thought, rely on action, and then win the next one. And then say you succeed, execute a pitch, hit a missile in one AB, come back up. How can you take that and go, okay, win this pitch, right? And not be content and keep, keep finding like, I guess that happy, that happy zone for you. Now, again, I hit record. I wanted to do a little self therapy session. This doesn't necessarily mean it's, uh, it's going to work for you. Or if it, you know, maybe you are somebody that needs to go out to every outing and think I'm going to punch the side or go into every game and be like, I'm going to hit four homers. Maybe that works for you, right? Like, who am I to say? But again, for me and the whole mission of like my brand and the, why I started the social media endeavor was like to take my experiences from this beautiful game of baseball and to give back to you guys, right? Those who seek that information, those who seek that quality content. So for me to sit here and, and do all this is like, Duh, of course I'm going to do it because I'm still going through these experiences in the game of baseball and I'm still learning from them. And like I said, I've learned from this in the past, but I just wasn't able to put that into action. So in closing, win this pitch, right? Like there's so many potential things that can come into our mind. There's so many potential things to potentially, whoa, <laughs> think about, do X, Y, Z, but when it really comes down to it, man, like simplify performance and say, all right, all focus is on this one pitch. Let's win it. What do I got to do to win it? Now, that's when we talk about your pre-pitch process and all of those other components that, you know, I've mentioned uh, previously on episodes. But for me, having gone through this experience, I was like, I am such a doofus. <laughs> How can I not learn from that? Uh, all right, guys. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Share this with somebody that you know could benefit from this.